All right, guys, Good Boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting out here in the Freedom Shack, and I am loading up, uh, preparing more brass for that 6 millimeter arc. Now, here's the cool thing. Um, a lot to learn in the reloading stuff. Uh, I've done some things where I can reload, but when it comes to really getting down to the nitty gritty, I've, I've realized that I have a whole lot to learn. And uh, the reason I'm making this video is I want you guys, if you don't mind, to run over and take a look at a good, a, a, a gentleman. His name is Elster's Reloading uh, Channel. Um, Todd Elster's. I hope he doesn't mind I use his real name. Anyway, he and I spent about an hour on the phone talking about this damn six millimeter arc. And I swear to God, it's interesting. Um, the amount of information that I, I didn't know about. But uh, he and I started talking about uh, bumping the shoulder back. And uh, you know what, I, I know we used to do this stuff in uh, bolt, bolt action stuff. But as far as semi-auto, what I was running into was an issue, especially on my reloads, not on factory loads, but just on the reloads, is that the thing would not go all the way in a chamber. So he was like, man, you gotta get that thing where you're taking the fire form brass, uh, where you've got, say for instance, uh, my fire form brass, I've got it set up to where I am. My calipers are set to zero right here uh, on a fire form brass. And I'm trying to set the shoulder back for thousands. And to, to tell you what that is, that, uh, that means that my fire form brass is gonna be closer to my chamber size not quite what the factory loads are. Uh, factory loads are a little bit smaller, but it's gonna give that thing less ability to expand, which I wasn't doing in, the, in my reloads. I mean, I was just resizing, decapping, and going with it. But he showed me uh, a video series that he did. And, and the reason I'm, I'm, there's a lot of guys out there who are into reloading. But I'm gonna tell you something, man, this guy, he knows his shit. And it's one of the things like he and I were talking about bumping his shoulders back. I didn't do it. What was not allowing that thing to do was go fully into battery. It wasn't firing unless I really jammed it in there. And then having, if it didn't go off and self extract, I was having a tough time pulling it out. He knew exactly what was wrong, hence reliability. Now, what does that do to me? Uh, it means that one, I'm real happy. I got five, 200 pieces of brass here that I'm gonna go ahead and prep. But then I've also got 300 pieces of factory uh, GA Precision uh, out of Kansas City, Missouri, I believe it is. Uh, but I'll tell you what, man, they're Johnny on the spot getting the thing. I got 500 more bullets coming in, uh, 105 Hornady uh, boat tail hog points. But with this newfound information, I'm probably gonna go ahead. And I know we're getting down to the wire for the uh, Snipers Unknown Challenge which I'm really going to use this firearm in that because it does give me the ability to reach out long distance, less resistance to wind than the 77 grain. Uh, but I'm also going to go back and I'm going to redo the 110 grain, the 108 ELDs. I've got a 105 burgers. I've got 95 grain burger and a 105. So we're going to redo. I'm going to do some sample firing test. It's going to be a fun, but I wanted to do a real quick video to just, let Todd know how much I appreciate it, uh, his information, and the time he spent on the phone with me. And uh, I'll tell you what, like I said, uh, a couple of people have made comments about, I, I don't, you know, you're, you do, you know when to say when, and I, and I do, but I have the luxury of having some backup rifles that I can just pull out and we can go to the competition. This is a challenge that I owe to the manufacturers out there uh, who, uh, sent me this stuff. I owe it to them to sh make a showing. And, man, look at that. Four thousandths. Perfect. Uh, I owe it to these guys to make a showing or make an attempt. And that's that's the difference. Uh, never giving up. Never quitting. And when you run into a problem, find out a solution. I've had people who work for me all the time and they go, well, let me tell you, let me show you a problem we got here. And I go, I, man, I tell you what, I can, I can get anybody to come out here and show me all the problems we've got. But what I want is someone who can show me a solution. Or at least give me ten, three solutions and let me pick the best one. 
People who just, I guess, moral of the story, don't ever give up. Learn. If you don't know something, reach out to those individuals who do know what they're doing and then learn from them and then follow through and uh, follow through with your commitments. So anyway, big thanks to Elfster. Thank you so much, sir. I can't even begin to tell you how much I appreciate it. And just from the reliability standpoint, we found a load that'll work. So I'm ecstatic about that because we're going to use that arc down there after Sniper's Unknown. So Rick and I are going to kick ass and take names. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm going to put the link to Elster's uh, reloading channel. Man, what a great guy. What an amazing resource of information. And he will take the time to sit down and show you. And he's got an entire deal where he goes through, shows you how to fire a form brass for a semi-auto, uh, takes a Palmetto State Armory 6.5 Grendel, and he gets a half inch out of it, which is pretty incredible. All right, guys, well, that's it. I got to get to work here. Uh, we always end up like this. God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom. His freedom is not free. Thanks, Todd. Man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I got a package that's getting ready to head out to your way. But I got a lot of other packages I got to send out. Sorry, guys, if I haven't got your packages out. Uh, so I haven't forgotten. They're riding around in a box in my car. Just having time. Y'all be good. I'm out of here. Take care.